can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. She is blessed and praised. Hey guys, welcome back to Twist and Shout. I am Char and today serves as a message of faith. In particular, I'm going to give a word of encouragement and I'm also going to touch bases on the hair growth challenge and the message or the word that God has given me that I hope will be a blessing to kind of make this piece whole. Forget what I'm saying. So y'all know that I put God first through everything. Like I do not go a day without giving him reference, giving him praise, giving him glory, worshiping, honoring. Like I try my best to live this thing that I'm teaching you guys because I have a great responsibility between me and God if I don't. Um, um, one of my subscribers made mention to me something that I had thought about, but then I said, I didn't want to offend, but then I believe that was confirmation, um, to, you know, my direction of where I'm going about this whole ministry, this YouTube page, my products. Y'all know I have a herbal butter and oil. I had made some MSM butters. Um, I'm waiting for feedback from the people that um, has gotten one. So the ones that I made, that will be it for now. And then once the feedback comes in and if it's effective, if it's good, um, if it's praiseworthy, then I will continue to make it and sell it. But until then, what's left in stock, that's it. Um, Y'all know, again, I have my oil. Can't see it because of the lighting. And I have my butter. I'm also going to be doing a oil and butter giveaway. So look out for that. I will leave the details under this video, as a matter of fact. But today, I want to come together and kind of just encourage someone um love on someone and help someone get through this journey and help someone to remain focused because I know all too well how hard it is to focus on what matters most when there's things that actually are something of interest to you, such as your hair, when it falls out, when it sheds, when it breaks, when you have setbacks, when it's not at the length that you think it should be, when your curl pattern isn't right, when your hair is rough, dry, you have like all these issues of concern that actually may affect how you feel about your hair and how you think you may look. I know it. I get it. Like I woke up today, y'all. I made a, um, I scratched my hair into sections thinking that I could still wear it like out, out. And it's like some was scratched, some was matted. And I'm just like, all right, well, I know how to fix that. Pineapple seems to fix everything. Like if you don't know, like if your wash and go didn't go so great, your twist out didn't go so great, your braid out, listen, the pineapple is where it's at. It's like a quick fix. Get you a little tie bow ribbon. I literally got this offline. Um for like a dollar and some change. They are in the hair stores. Listen, where there's a will, there's a way. But let me read some scriptures that um I was literally sitting here and me and my husband talk about this thing, about the ministry and just what to bring forth. And I'm just like, it's getting kind of scary because you see the subscriber number rising and that's just more souls and more responsibility. But I give God a glory and honor and I hope that he guides and leads me accordingly. So today I'm gonna read a scripture. I'm coming from 2 Peter 1, and I'm going to start with verse 2 and probably sum it up somewhere around verse 9, if that's okay. And this is NIV. Um, this version, I had my new King James, but this one kind of makes it more plain because I don't want no confusion. Verse 2 starts out saying, Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in divine nature. Heaven escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. 
for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Thank God for the reading of the word. I hope that was plain and simple. I'm just going to touch on it a little bit. Basically, you cannot have this thing called salvation without faith. Faith is the basis of your salvation. If you do not believe, you do not have salvation. And as the word said, because a lot of people get so bold and so cocky and so arrogant and they sit there and head in there open their mouth and say, I chose God. You did not choose God. This flesh, this sin that we was born into is contrary of Christ. It is antichrist. God had a plan for us and he chose us because our mind, our heart is wicked. It's nothing in us that we were born into that would have made us choose God. So that's something that I had to learn because it's so easy. And, and some people don't mean no harm by it when they say, well, I chose Christ. I chose God. No, you didn't choose anything. God chose you. And because he chose you, you chose him. That's how that works. And it's not a bad thing because we're chosen. And because we're chosen, we have more so even more reasons to give him glory and praise for thinking enough of us who is wretched, wicked, unworthy, filthy. He thought enough of us in the midst of our mess. He could see through that and say, you know what? I want you. I want you. I want you. He chose us. And let me, I'm just like, I said, I'm gonna make this full circle for you. Um, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. So again, the beginning is faith. You start with faith. I believe I can get through this. I believe that God will see fit for me to have healthy hair. I believe that God will see fit that I will grow my edges back. I believe that the Lord will have mercy and allow these bald spots to grow in. I believe that the Lord will have mercy on me and help me to thicken up my hair. Help me to gain the knowledge and understanding and the wisdom to take care of my hair. I believe these things. When I started making my products, like I said, my, my whole thing was, Lord, my son has to walk around with his scalp bare in a family full of hair. I said, Lord, if it be your will, help me to help him. And like I said, I start mixing and going about my business and voila. And like I said, yes, um, the very first thing I, cause mind you, he's a baby. He was, um, about, I don't know, about nine, between six and nine months when this thing started happening, like more evidently because around from between three to six months, it was like, well, your hair kind of getting a little straight. Like, like, I know you're black, like what's going on? And then you start paying attention, like your scalp start being real. You're like, wait a minute, the hair is thinning. Yes, it seemed to be changing texture, but it was thinning out. It was coming out. And I said, you know, I have to do something. And I prayed, because mind you, while he's going through, I'm going through. My hair is coming out. My edges was bare. Like you could see all my scalp right here. But I asked God, because I knew 
That's where my help comes from. That's where my knowledge comes from. That's where my understanding, my comprehension, anything that I need and want comes from him, not from my own will, not from my own might, but from the Lord. Add to your faith goodness. What do you think about when you think about goodness? His goodness and mercy, his goodness and grace, his goodness and love. That's, that's a big deal. Like goodness is good within coming out. And how do you go about goodness? Where did goodness come from? Because like I said, we're, we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we cannot create goodness. We have to get goodness from God. You want peace? You go to the Lord. You want love? You go to the Lord. That's my whole point. Anything you need and desire, you need a change of mind. Like I know a lot of people say, man, I just get so frustrated and tired and aggravated and I hate my hair. First of all, first of all, you don't need to hate your hair because God gave it to you. And you may say, why would that make a difference if, if I don't like how nappy my hair is or how kinky it is or how it doesn't hold a curl pattern or how mad it is? What it has to do with God? Plain and simple. Because like I said, we as humans, we make things so complicated, but plain and simple. He is our creator. He saw fit for me to have this hair. He saw fit. And just for that thought alone, that is enough for me to dwell on the fact that, you know what? Whatever his will is, is a whole lot better and greater than mine. And it serves for good purpose. And he gets the glory out of it. That's it. So if it's intended for you to have some kind of medical issue, and your hair comes out, God will get the glory out of that. No matter how ugly it may seem, no matter how miserable it may seem, like people who go through cancer and chemo, you think they want to lose their hair? Their hair is the last thing they hold on to. You see them, they, they, they come to terms with, okay, I got to eat this way. I got to go to these doctor's appointments. I got to take this medicine. But usually with women, that last thing that they don't want to let go of is that hair. Not my hair, Lord. The hair is the evidence that something's wrong with me. Guess what? You can hide your medicine. You can tuck your medicine in your bag. You can cover that up. You can not tell your business about your doctor's appointments. You don't have to tell nobody you got cancer except for your loved ones. And some people don't even do that. But that one thing that everybody like, Ooh, what's wrong with her? That hair. Like people judge you just by what this looks like. And sure, you may get a hat. Wait a minute, when you start wearing hats? You might start wearing wigs and weeds. What you had on there? Or the old people tell you. Sorry, I don't want to use the word old. Elders. Yeah, I'm through the wig on. I, I had my mess. I ran into a woman in Walmart uh, about two, three months ago. She was on the hair aisle. She asked me, said, I just want to ask you, what do you use on your hair? Because I want to wear my hair out like that. And I showed her, I said, well, lately, I'm experimenting with mixing between the self rate and the do girl. And she said, do I have to get both of those? And I said, well, honestly... Everything I missed the stuff ate with works. So she got that. And don't get me wrong. I, I get why price could be an issue. But you have to ask yourself. I want the cure, right? So am I going to put a price on that? Now, the cheapest route, the fastest route is to go directly to God. And trust me, we all been there when we want to take matters in our own hands. And we're just like... I need to quit fix. My hair fell out. I wanted, and, and I did that too. I'm like, God, what is happening? But mind you, this is the point where I still went back on the, the grease bandwagon. I was still, you know, natural products and slap stuff in. I'm looking, I'm like, ain't nothing happening, God. God, this is embarrassing. I don't feel pretty. Like, I, yeah, you asked my husband. Like, he was just like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't feel it. I don't feel cute. He used to tell me, I used to get dressed from church. I'm like, you wearing that? I don't feel like dressing up. I don't feel, and he knows because he met me. Because that's another thing. That's a whole nother sermon. Ladies, just the same way you we preach to them and say, hey, you need to act like the same way when we met. It's just like us. If we present ourselves like this, nice, neat, we need to carry that throughout the marriage. But that's a whole nother message. But y'all get what I'm saying? Like, this thing can wear and tear on you. When I got my um, 
the ball spot, the the bat, the patch is somewhere in here wasn't, you know, I can cover it up like this. But when that patch got right here, I said, not my front, man. What? In, and I'm talking about, I got mad. I, I put my hands on the sink like this. And I'm like, why? Why did you take my hair? What's wrong with you? And you know we talk to God like that. Don't act brand new. We all do it. Get in a car accident. What in the world? Why did that happen? Go to the doctor. They tell us something. What in the world? Why do? Why? Why? We love to question Father. We love to get mad at him. We love to stomp and throw and throw a tender tantrum. And we puff up like, who do you think you are? And I'm telling y'all. Even when I was sitting there and I'm just like, God, my child's losing. Like, literally, my daughter started having an issue with her hair, too. So we all losing our hair. What is wrong? What did I do? I'm sitting here. I'm trying to honor my husband. I'm trying to take care of my home. I already ain't got a job due to the complication of my pregnancy. And then I had a, um, what you call it, a hermogenobla something, the little blood, uh, clot thing that grows on the outside of your skin i'll put it on the screen i already had one of that growing on my thumb and every time i try to do anything cook clean take care of the kids if i hit it wrong it will bust and i will bleed for minutes at a time i literally was falling apart like lord i, I can't sit here and manipulate and do to my hair because i got this thing on my hand whole lot of stuff going on i started getting nausea like I was about the same nausea you get from the beginning of your pregnancy. I started getting it like driving in the car. Like I just started to get real sick to the point I'm like, okay, uh, husband, okay, when we stop, can we can we wait a second? Had a lot of things going on. Started having allergic reactions to cinnamon and fish and strawberries. Like my body was just going crazy, and my hair was paying. But I'm just, it got to a point. Where watch they was just like, don't look, don't try to collect it. But who would have thought? Who would have thought that out of that mess, out of that filth, that I would took time and knowledge because I had all the time to work because I didn't work. God, God had a plan. You get what I'm saying? He had a plan. I couldn't see it. All I saw was hair. Like, what in the world, Lord? Why? The whole time he was building me and he was crafting me to say, you know what? Somebody else is going through the same thing. Somebody else has lost their job. Somebody else is stressing. Somebody else. Has, is having hair. You're not the only one. How dare you stand in front of me and talk about yourself? What about people that's been dealing with this for years? It only happened to you for a couple months and now you want to cry? Now you want to pout? Listen. He corrects those he loves. And obviously I was going in the wrong direction fast. Had a good paying job, had a car, had money. Was going shopping every Friday payday, and that's a, and y'all y'all don't know the blessing of having a job that pays well and gets paid every week. That that's a different story. But God said, "Come here, <laughs> come here." Took me right out of the job right before my son was born, sick as a dog, throwing up every morning, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. Y'all, I know many people have gone through some pregnancies, but trust me, when you gone through one as delight as my first one, like, oh, I didn't even know I was pregnant. Two, is it twins in there? Women go through so much. But anywho, I'm sorry. Y'all know how I do. Um, to goodness, knowledge. <laughs> I got to a point, I just said, Lord, you took everything from me. But your goodness, your goodness, your grace, your mercy is enough. It is sufficient for my well-being, for my living. Lord, I am alive. You know, um, my personality, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all, when something bad happened, I go down, 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 down. Whereas my husband... Like, when we was driving one night and we hit a car. I mean, we hit a deer, I'm sorry. He said, well, thank God we got insurance. I'm sitting there like, but the car messed up. You see how God creates balance? 
Praise God. In marriages and friendships, relationships, you may have a friend like that. Y'all, you might be the opposite. But speaking on myself, I'm just like, I'm like, my car messed up. It got to go in the shop. That's, we got to pay money. We got to figure out a ride situation. That's just me. But y'all, God's been working on me and been dealing with me. And sometimes I amaze myself like, you know what? God is still good. I'm still here. I can talk. We're not broken. The whole family's in the car. My son, who was a baby, baby did. He didn't even wake up. Y'all, it's a my thing. Knowledge. Feed yourself the word. Pick this Bible up. Meditate on these things so that your spirit can start to discipline and whip into shape your heart and your mind. This is something you have to do every day. And with the with goodness, like I said, the goodness was I still had a phone. My, my husband was still able to pay my phone bill, take all care of all the bills. We still had lights, electricity. Yes, things were tight, but, I, you know, I said, could, could you give me some coconut oil? Could you get me a bottle of olive oil? Can you get me a, a bottle so I can mix it up with, a spray bottle? Some aloe vera juice. And it started from there, y'all. It ended with more knowledge. And, and I just kept looking and, and Googling and researching and YouTube. And I'm like, wow, 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 wow. All this knowledge and stuff that was right here the whole time. Y'all don't hear me. And with knowledge comes self-control. Lord God, that was one that kind of went over my head. Because guess what? God, I carried away. I started watching YouTube day and night. Googling day and night. I started mixing day and night. Still do. And then was that, that bulk of the buying and the purchase and stuff trying to find that solution. When my help comes from the Lord. Y'all, the same way he can take one person and literally grow their hair with just simply shampoo, conditioner, leave-in, oil. The same way he can do the person that is the shampoo, conditioner, grease. The same way for the person that has to do pre-poo, rinse, shampoo, conditioner, leave-in, cream, oil, LCO, LOC, whatever it takes. He's the same God for all of us, whether it's type three, type four, four through A through C. He's the same God over all of us. And we have to humble ourselves and we have to reference him in all we do. Because guess what? I went natural, not just because the whole world was going natural. I went natural because... I said to myself, you know what? I've been covering my hair and I've been camouflaging with eyeshadow and earrings and bracelets and long tracks. Y'all see my pictures. My tracks was 26, 30 inches. I did not play. Bone straight. Every now and then I get a little wave of natural hair. But people went years and never saw my hair. Kept it covered. Didn't take care of it. Trying to be something I wasn't. And one day I said, I told my husband, I said, would you be mad if I... He said, well, we can't afford it right now, no way. So, no, you're still beautiful. And I've been going ever since, y'all. To God be the glory. And I'm not saying this is everybody's story. But I know what your story is. God is your creator, whether you like it or not. Whether you have faith or not. Whether you call yourself saved or not. God created you. He created me. What is your purpose? Self-control, something I need to work with and something I still need to work on. But God is helping me. He's dealing with me. Um, I look at my stuff and I get sick to my stomach, y'all. Like all the little products I bought, I'm like, I went too far. Even with the grease, I went too far. Mixing, went too far. Just went too far. And I'm, I'm warm enough to admit that. And I also am warm enough to say before each video, I'm saying, hey, I chose to do this. I'm not telling y'all to do this. I'm doing this. If you want to do it, cool. Even with the seller of my MSM butter. I'm like, look. Yes, I view MSM in oil. Yes, I deem it safe. Taking it topical. But you figure that out. You make that decision. Self-control, perseverance. 
y'all, don't nobody know perseverance like a natural. You have to keep going. You have to press towards the mark, the goal. We have a hair growth challenge. Hair growth, I say health growth, but same thing. We have a healthy hair growth challenge. We have marks, we have dates, we have calendars, we have tools, we have everything we need. But the first thing that I should have posted was God. I, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna shame my game. I did it out of order, I'm sorry. But Lord, forgive me, I'm here now. Put God first, trust him, love him, let him have his way. Seek him, seek the kingdom of God, seek to do the kingdom will of God. Cause that's nothing. Cause we can say we can go play church, but what is your purpose? What is the, what is God's will for you? What is, what part are you in the church body? Are you the hand? Are you the finger? Are you the ankle? Are you the foot? Are you the knee? Cause we need all of it. We can't have three heads. We can't have ten feet. We can't have four thousand arms. And I mean that figuratively, like, because obviously you have more than one elder, you have more than one deacon, but a lot of times people are not seeking God before they try to fulfill these duties. With perseverance, godliness. Okay, if I give you these inches that you asked for, if I take care of those bald spots, is it going to fix your attitude? Are you going to change your heart towards me? Are you going to treat people differently? Are you going to spread? Are you going to speak of the goodness? If I bless you, are you going to reference it back to me? Or are you going to walk around like you're too good and you don't need me for anything? Because we face it when everything's perfect and good. We don't need God. We boast on ourselves. And to God in this mutual affection, I love you. You don't have to love me. But I do love you. That's how you start. And then it should be a point where we can say, God bless you. I love you. And that could be a mutual understanding. You know what? I love you just because God made you. And you are my sister and brother in Christ. That's that middle ground. My brother, my sister, I love you because you decided to be natural with me. And I'm not saying I don't love people who aren't natural. But I'm saying whatever the common ground is, God bless you. I love you. I make sure I try to say that on all my videos because I don't discriminate white black puerto rican asian haitian african united kingdom it does not matter i love you you don't have to know me i love you god thought enough to create you and send you to my channel that's enough for me and to mutual affection love do you understand how this is a complete circle y'all you start with faith and you work to love because a lot of people think oh i love y'all love no nah, you have to love has to God has to deal with you so that you honestly and truly understand what love means. It was just the other day, I, and I told y'all, I'm very transparent. When I first got married, or even before I got married, I said, you know what? I don't think marriage for me. I can't see myself looking the same face every day. I can't see myself dealing with the same mess over and over again. Nah, this ain't for me. And so I got in a situation so bad, I said, God, send my husband and teach me to be a wife. And almost every week before I went to church and I'm stumbling to see what I want to read, I always came across the scriptures about wives, submit yourself to your husband. I kept saying, God, I'm not married. But you know what he said to me? You're going to be. Created me a clean heart, renew my spirit, give me a sound mind, Lord. Give me a sound mind. This is something that has to be done daily. Like, you don't just... Poof, you're married and you got all the answers. I'm still learning. And just the other day, I was looking at him and I said, Lord, you gave me something beautiful. Not just the marriage, not just the extra kids, but you gave me your son. And even with that, because guess what? Until you actually can sit there and say, Jesus was sacrificed. And he was crucified just so my stupid, ignorant self can have a chance at life so that I can go around making all these mistakes and disrespecting my God and disowning him and being rude and bitter just so I can do all that that don't even give God glory. But nevertheless, you said, as my favorite song say, thank you, Jesus. You thought I was to die for. Let that, let that 
marinate in your spirit, as they say. You thought I was worth saving. I don't, like, literally this story, every time I hear it, like, I just get chills and bumps. I'm just like, you thought I was to die for. Like, you literally took, even now, scientists say there's no way in the world that somebody can take being nailed here and stay sane. Yet, Jesus is hung on that cross and he's talking to the Father, your will be done, Lord. Y'all, like, look, I ain't, I ain't the type to kind of push nothing on nobody, but listen, this is for somebody. Like, I don't think you get it. Like, do you, you think he hung on that cross and was humiliated? And as my own mother-in-law would say, listen, that cross, that picture that's painted with the little cloth hanging around his privates, that ain't true. They stripped him naked. They humiliated him. They spit on him. They put thorns in his head. They pierced his sides and watched the blood and water just leak out. Just so we can sit here and be stupid, be crazy, be ignorant, be foolish, be rebellious, be disobedient, be dishonoring. He didn't die for that. But y'all, I didn't mean to preach like that, but hey, to God be the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But listen, y'all. Yes, I talk about hair, but without God, there would be no hair. He saw fit to give women hair, and he said, our hair is our glory. So the best thing we can do is say, God, I'm doing this for you. I'm moisturizing for you today. I'm misting my hair for you. I'm doing protective twisting and braiding for you. I'm TLC in my hair for you, God. You're getting the glory because you decide to design us with hair on our heads and I'm going to take care of what you give me and Lord you help me, you guide me you send me to the right people to get this thing right you send me to the right products I pray over all my stuff when I'm making I'm like Lord help me to make this precise help me to make this accurate help me to help me help me Lord and as the time go on, like I said, I'm gaining more knowledge and wisdom and understanding, Lord. And whatever it is that will help the masses, Lord, help me. And this serves as a prayer. I don't mean for this to be long. I'm sorry. I apologize. But we're here. So I just want to pray with you guys. And I want you to comment below. What is your problem? What is your issue? What is going on with you? How can I help? Let, let's do this thing together. Let's chit chat. Let's talk. Let's collaborate. What is your issue? I, I conquered that with the Lord's help. The Lord delivered me from the hair shed, the hair fall, the baldness, the thinness. He helped me recover from a setback. How did God help you? So you can help somebody else. That's love. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we, first of all, we come to you. We ask that you forgive us of all our sins, Lord. Forgive us. Help us to help one another. Help us to love one another. Help us to be kind, to be gentle. Help us to be knowledgeable. Help us to have godliness, Lord. Help us to have patience, Lord. Help us to do our research, do our homework. Help us to be diligent. Help us to be organized. Give us self-control, Lord. Lord, we don't need to buy any and everything. We don't need to have a thousand products to feel accomplished, Lord. Help us to have the bare minimum. Help us to seek your face, Lord, and give you glory. Lord, your will be done over these women, Lord, and men. Lord, there's anybody with any issues or concerns, Lord, any health issues, Lord, that is not evident, we ask that it be revealed so that they can take care of it, Lord. But if there's anything that you can help us with our hands and our tools and what we have at home, Lord, you help us and you guide us, Lord, to make this as smooth and easy as possible, Lord, and we just want you to get the glory. Lord, I ask that... You help those who may have financial issues, Lord, or may not have clean water, Lord, that you make a way. Lord, those that like me, Lord, who have a very, very, very poor diet, Lord, I ask that you help us, Lord, and you give us the courage to do better and do what is right in your sight. Lord, it's not easy. But, Lord, even you can take the littlest amount of nutrition and food, and you can make it much, Lord. 
Lord, you have worked miracles throughout the whole Bible in our lives right now, Lord. Lord, you have brought me a mighty long way, and I thank you. Lord, if it just means I have two, three strands, Lord, there's two, three strands that somebody else don't have. And Lord, we ask that even when we're going through our season and our loss, that we don't forget others, Lord, around us. Lord, I ask and rebuke stress and depression, Lord. Lord, anything that will weigh on us and tear on our emotions, Lord, self-esteem, Lord, anger, bitterness, arrogance, hurt, pain, heartache, any of these things, Lord, that will bring stress, depression, anxiety that will also cause hair loss. Lord, we ask that you remove it, remove it from our lives, Lord, remove it from those of us watching, Lord. Lord, I ask that, Lord, you just rebuke us when we're wrong. Correct us. Do not spare the rod, Lord. Lord, we want to be right. We want to be made whole. We want to be healed. We want to be delivered from all those things, Lord. Lord, we ask these things, Lord, in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we just plead the blood over everyone that's watching. Lord, we ask that, Lord, let it go beyond just my subscribers, Lord. Lord, let it reach somebody else. Lord, let us communicate with one another and keep up one another, Lord. Help us to love and encourage one another, Lord. And help us to have hope and faith in you that not our will, but yours be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, we prayed over our hair and our hair journey. I love you guys. God bless. Thank you for your time. Sorry, I'm a little long-winded, but to God be the glory. So, you go bless the one today. And again, the com in, the com in the description section, I'm sorry, I can't even talk, Lord, so happy. You put your, um, your issue, your struggle, your prayer. And we're going to join in together and we're going to pray on one accord. And I'm going to put in the description box details on the giveaway, the first one of many. I'm going to try to do at least five. And they're going to be different things. I'm just going to start out with my oil and butter first and um, just be a blessing and help somebody. I love you guys. God bless. Take care.